On Tuesday, May 15th, the College Football Hall of Fame Class of 2012 was officially announced. It was a collection of 17 remarkable individuals, players and coaches representing 18 schools from the Atlantic Coast to Southern California. Some of their careers are preserved only in black and white, while performances from the younger members of the class are still fresh in our memories. This group was comprised of All-Americans, record holders, Heisman winners, and national champions. And a handful would go on to achieve great things as professionals in the National Football League. Congratulations to these college football immortals for getting the recognition they so definitely deserved. Still, countless people who have impacted this beautiful sport must wait at least another year to gain entry. Of the 84 men on the final ballot, only 20% were admitted. I think we're being too selective. Some of the snubs include Sterling Sharp. First Team All-American in 1987, First Team All-SEC player in 1986 and 1987, second all-time in South Carolina history for career receiving yards with 2,497, and already a member of the school's Hall of Fame. Derek Thomas, linebacker for the Alabama Crimson Tide during the same period, a First Team All-American in 1988, he was awarded the Buckus Award too, given to the nation's greatest linebacker. He set the NCAA record for sacks in the season with 27, and the SEC's career sack record with 52. And Danny Werfel. He won the 1996 Heisman Trophy, 1996 Johnny Unitas Award, 1996 Maxwell Award, 1996 Walter Camp Award, etc. A two-time first-team All-American, he led the Gators to the 1996 National Championship. Granted, there was a bit of controversy. The Big Ten led all conferences with 20 player candidates on the ballot, but only Purdue's Otis Armstrong got the nod. A couple of prominent names who didn't make the cut, 2001 Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch from Nebraska, and former Major League Baseball player Kirk Gibson, who used to be a wideout at Michigan State. One really disappointing exclusion was Tommy Frazier, famous quarterback from Nebraska. Frazier went 33-3 as a starter, having to overcome Crohn's disease, which led to unfortunate blood clot problems. He was the MVP of three straight championship games, the last two of which the Cornhuskers won. He was the captain and unquestioned leader of the 1995 team, which was one of the greatest in college football history. Frazier is already on the all-century team, so his absence from the hall is head-scratching to say the least. Some of the eligibility requirements are silly, like the fact that active professional players aren't under consideration, or that head coaches have to wait until retirement or their 70s, whichever comes first. But so long as the greatest achievers in college football eventually get some love, I suppose it isn't a big deal. According to the National Football Foundation, the 2012 Hall of Fame class will be inducted and enshrined simultaneously July 20th and 21st in South Bend, Indiana. My sources say it will be a jam-packed weekend of fun-filled events. Eli Sussman, BeyondYouSports.com, Twitter handles. More content coming soon.